Happy Wipe Boys 12.11 is finally here and there has been some really cool additions, a ton of fixes and it's overall quite a good patch from what I've seen so far. But what has been added, what has been changed, well finally a full list of patch notes have been released after the update which is a little bit unusual but they wanted us to sort of go in blind and that's alright by me I suppose. So I'm going to break down a few things in this patch notes list and just go over everything that was added, changed and everything like that and then we'll be doing some more in-depth videos on certain topics in the coming days and weeks. So without further ado, let's just uh, go straight through it shall we? So the first thing that is added is obviously the big thing, the main thing, the factory expansion. Adding extra underground pathways and an extra bit onto the far left side, basically making it a rectangular map now rather than its original T-shape. With the factory expansion we have the new scav boss Tagilla. This is Killer's brother as we found out through the leaks leading up to the wipe itself and this is basically going to be his new home. He's got a level 6 armor, a level 5 face mask which is flashbang resistant and he has shotguns and an AK that he will rip you to shreds with and of course his sledgehammer which unfortunately cannot be looted but when you do get hit by it you can sometimes fall straight to the ground and then you have to get up again you'll have broken bones and then within three or four hits you will be dead this guy is actually really smart he sets up ambushes opens suppressive fire and he breaches doors as well which is something we talked about a few weeks ago how he was gonna sneak around and jump scare you and he is really jumpy a really really jumpy boss actually Moving on from factory we have our first iteration of weapon malfunctions and technical deterioration and this is meaning that any weapon can malfunction, it can misfire, it can jam, no matter the durability obviously the lower the durability the more it will jam, but every gun in the game, almost every gun in the game can misfire and misfires can be resolved in a bunch of different ways. So the shift key default hotkey which allows you to pull the bolt back will fix a lot of these misfires and these jammings. And they've also reworked the technical condition of the guns and how they deteriorate when firing. Certain ammunition and weapon mods will affect how quick it deteriorates and there is a new stat in the inspect menu called durability burn which will show just how quick it will deteriorate. The condition of the weapon also affects its base accuracy and that means if your weapon is in dire need of repair it's going to be harder to control. Makes sense right? So you're going to need to make sure your weapon is at max durability to get the most out of your weapons. Speaking of durability you will see that if you pick up weapons off of scavs and especially in the early days of the wipe you will be doing so for those ADARs and other things like that. You're going to want to make sure that you don't use them in raid because every weapon that I've seen on a scav has a maximum of 55 durability meaning you can't even repair it past that and that's not reliable that's not reliable at all also nvidia reflex has finally been added within the in-game settings of escape from tarkov meaning if you have the latest nvidia driver you will be able to switch all these on and experience up to a 38 percent decrease of your system latency i'll do a full test on this in a few days time look out for that video if you've not subscribed get subscribed for that because we'll be testing just how good it really is so scav karma is also in the game now we heard about this but we didn't know what it was going to entail this is all based around fence fence is the one that keeps all the scavs in check i presume because now he has two loyalty levels he has the normal level one loyalty and he has max rep loyalty and this is all based on scav karma if you're playing as a scav quite a bit then you're going to want your scav karma to be as high as possible for multiple reasons but you're going to need to be aware because simply killing non-hostile scavs as a player scav will lose reputation with fence and therefore lose your scav karma and you can gain it by helping scavs and scav bosses kill their enemy and you can also gain this reputation by using a friendly scav exfil or using the car exfils within your raids and the fence reputation actually affects a few things the main thing is the player scav cooldown. If you have the lowest reputation you can possibly have for a scav, you'll be waiting one hour and a half to get into each scav raid. That's insane when it usually is 15 minutes. But it can also affect another few things as well, like the scav box craft time 
the amount of exfils for the player scav, the car extract fee, the player scav kit itself, so the higher your reputation the better gear your scav will have, and the price of your items when selling to fence. The higher the fence reputation is, the more often scav AIs will agree to help a player scav and respond to its commands like follow or hold position, and with very low reputation AI scavs will attack the player scavs. And also with very high levels of reputation your AI scavs will help by attacking your enemies while you're in your raid and also bosses will be considered allies so you won't get shot on sight by those either. If you manage to level up fence to his max then you will be able to do a really cool thing that I've been asking for ages and that is actually being able to purchase uninsured items lost by other players just by simply going into fence's trade menu. That is insane so you can find fully modded weapons just sitting in fences traders just because someone didn't insure it or lost it in raid it's pretty incredible there's also a sorting table now this isn't extra storage so don't get confused on that but it is basically a box that you can click inside of your stash that basically you can drag things over to it and it just helps with organizing your stash really it's basically like having a backpack on your back where you can just chuck a bunch of things in so you can move them about in your stash if your stash is full. So really nice little bits of things here but we're not done. There's a full rework of in-game ballistics like penetration chance, bullet deviation and fragmentation. That's really interesting. Every weapon acts differently now. Not a massive amount but you will notice it on certain weapons. There's new equipment like body armors, vests, chest rigs, backpacks and other items. There's a few new weapons. There's the new 155 shotgun. There's the mutant in the game and a few other things. I'll be doing weapon builds and all that for that at a later date. There's new quests and obviously quest guides will be on the channel when we get to those quests and I can show you how to do them for you. There's new barter items, new PMC face that you can look at if you, if you like it I suppose. New weapon mods again that links in with the weapon builds we'll be doing at a later date. And there's an ability to report a suspicious player in the flea market now. The next thing goes out to all your streamers out there, there's going to be a new status for streamers which will allow them to hide various user information from the game's client like their raid code and other things. And this can be activated in the main page of your game settings, but it's only available on personal requests so more details about how you can submit a request will be given by BSG later on. You know when you're in raid and you double tap Y and you can change a bunch of things and bind certain voice commands and hand gestures onto your PMC? Well you can now do that out of raid simply by going into your settings and if you go to controls there's a new thing called phrases. You can customize it all there nice and easy and then test it out in your hideout. If you right click on an item there is now a thing called top up and this basically allows you to fill the stack of items by items of the same kind. For example if you have two different 30 round stacks of ammo and you click top up that will merge those into a 160 round stack really nice and easy like that a lot really nice quality of life and it won't mix found in raid items with non found in raid items meaning if you are trying to keep some things for a quest that needs to be found in raid it won't ruin that just by mixing things together that's really nice there's a new main menu background personally my favorite one it's labs mixed with a little bit of factory really nice and cool there's a little CCTV camera moving about the place love it to bits there's also a couple new skills added to the game weapon maintenance and troubleshooting troubleshooting gonna be troubleshooting your weapon weapon maintenance keeping on top of your weapon so it's all to do with this just breaking down of your weapons all to do with this malfunctioning shit that is going on there's a few things that they've tweaked with network settings and the anti-aliasing of the game and also another big thing the old max level cap for Escape from Tarkov was level 70, they've increased that to now 79. Really cool list of additions but now they've changed a bunch of things and they've fixed a hell of a lot so let's go over that as well shall we. So the first thing changed and actually this was the first thing that caught my eye was a optics rework. A few optics look different, the main one being the PK-06, the actual reticle is far bigger and far blurrier, I don't like it. But nevertheless, the uh, the Cobra as well, that, that little cheap thing, that's shit as well now. So they've basically made optics a little bit worse. I haven't really seen any optics that look better. 
They've also made it so the aim down sights camera is always going to be the same distance away from the weapon no matter what optic you put on it and where you put the optic. In the olden days you used to be able to put an optic on the front of your weapon on top of the handguard and you used to be able to zoom in a little bit further and it would make the sight bigger and all different things like that. You can't do that now and this will change a bunch of different things including hybrid sights like the hammer. They've also made it so there is a max item limit that you can put on the flea market in one go. Now you can't exceed the amount of slots that are in a person's stash for example. Back in the old days you used to be able to see like 26,000 Soleil was up for 69, 69, 69. You can't, you can't get that anymore, which is, is great, honestly. It's great, it's just annoying. Just annoying. And also, speaking of flea market, that is now accessible at level 20 or higher, so no more level 10s. You guys have got to grind a bit further and grind a bit harder to get to the flea market. And I personally like that. Back in the days before the flea market, you had to rely on the traders, you had to rely on what was given to you in raid, and this just makes it a little bit harder for the early game, which I do love. And the Kappa quest is also more difficult to complete because there's a bunch of different streamer items that have been added to that quest. Also a bunch of different quest rewards have changed meaning that you won't be getting the same things as you always did for completing your different missions and some of the items that you get from completing quests have actually been improved so you get better items from it so that is nice to do as well. Most of the items that you can find in raid have been changed in terms of the spawn chances and where you find them so that's nice to know as well. We can be finding things in different locations and at different rarities as well. They've also rebalanced a bunch of weapon modifications to battle this meta concept that Battlestate really don't like. So a bunch of different attachments have changed and been rebalanced so we're going to have to look at what is the best weapons to use and what are the best attachments to use in the coming days when we do our weapon builds. As you progress through the game you'll notice that the higher tier ammo and gear have all been rebalanced in terms of availability. You won't be finding it as easy in raid and traders won't be stocking as many of them. This is great personally but you've still got the flea market to contend with. Also skill bonuses for the strength skill have been decreased for the movement speed so you won't be moving as quick and jumping as high when you are max strength. And how quickly you level the skill of mag drills has also been buffed so you'll be able to level that a little bit quicker than how you used to. There's also a bunch of different lighting changes on all the different maps. You'll find that signs start to flicker, the gas station in customs is a prime example for that. That's nice, yeah just a nice little, the game looks better, it, it just looks better and the lighting is key to make any game look better. And they've also updated the in-game map for Woods. You will now see that there's fake taxi written on your map. I'm going to go see good old John and talk to him for a good 20 minutes and stare at his camera in the corner of his, in, in, of his taxi. Yeah, that sounds good. And lastly, in these changes, we have bushes. All the bushes in the game you can no longer sprint through. Um, all the light, tall grass you can but those thick bushes you can no longer sprint through and you can no longer go prone in them. So no more bushwookies for the most part, but I tell you something, I really needed a shit today and that bush was staring me in the face and I went to lay down in it and I couldn't and I was sitting in woods and I was like, ah, oh, fuck. And I had to hold him a shit for a good 20 minutes. I'm, I'm, I'm not happy about that one. I'm not happy about that at all. My ass did not thank me. So to avoid making this video an hour and a half long, there are a ton of fixes, I won't go through all of them, I'll summarise some of them, but every single fix will be on screen in text for you to read, as well as in the description, all of the patch notes will be there also. So the main one that I think is important is some players would never spawn after getting a successful matching, I had that a few times. We used to get booted straight back to the main menu and sometimes lose our gear. That won't happen anymore, you're all good with that. Also, Sturman and his guards used to move silently. I never experienced that, but I know a few players that did, and that ain't happening anymore. That is nice, I like that. The quest Punisher Part 4, where you used to have to wear a scav vest and go and kill things on the shoreline, that used to be able to be done without a scav vest. That's not the case anymore. I know who told him fuck's sake damn it <laughs> it's just even harder now but yeah you're gonna have to wear a scav vest from now on 
They've also changed a bunch of audio issues. Now, for the most part, they don't specify which audio issues have been fixed. However, I do know that they've fixed a bunch of the silent grenades and stuff like that. I have encountered one issue with a silent grenade, but I digress. And I've also still encountered like a single footstep behind me when there's no one there and being able to hear bullets that aren't actually sounding like bullets. They just sound like cracks and pops within the audio quality. It just doesn't sound very like good at all, really. There's That's all still there, but I have encountered less audio issues than I used to. Lighting, especially under night vision, has also been corrected. So there's no more flicker around the screen and there's a lot less glare, which is great. And this also has changed a few flashlights as well. So make sure you go into RAID and have a look at how they look now, because they're, they're different, they're different. They've also removed a bunch of known exploits on certain locations as well. They won't specify which ones, but if you like exploit in this game, go try your favorite exploit. It's probably not in there anymore. And they've also optimized a few things. They've optimized physics, they've optimized graphics. Like I said earlier, the game does look a lot better and they've optimized servers. It's a shame they haven't optimized load times, but again, I digress. So yeah, a lot of changes, a lot of additions, and a lot of fixes. But of course, this is still Tarkov. There's still going to be issues. But nevertheless, this is a really fun patch so far. Let me know what you guys think down below in the comments, and make sure you're subscribed, as I said earlier, for all of the future content coming in the days and weeks. I love you so much. Thank you so much for listening to me ramble on about these patch notes. Like I said, in the description, if you do want to read them all. And other than that, I love you. See you soon. Goodbye.